All right, time for the finale. Do it. And Walker. Are you ready, amigos? Then let us set forth for the reckoning. Having come this far, I know everyone's resolve is beyond doubt. So I will only say that say only this. Within that dead sun swells the emotions that Mitian has hoarded. The emotions of innumerable souls who strove for happiness but failed. As it was with the denizens of Ultima Thule that oh wait, I should probably actually show you this. Hey, there we are. I am an idiot. Got to switch scenes. Anyways, here I am. We're good. We're fine. We're back. As it was with the denizens of Ultima Thule that barred our way, it is not for us to rebuke or admonish. But it's not by passing judgment for the tragic legacies of others that we arrived at this moment. Rather, it was by opening our hearts to their despair, by understanding and acknowledging their faiths, while still refusing to share in them ourselves, hold fast to hope, not in ignorance, but by choice. Should you struggle to do so, I am here to help, as you have all helped me. We will prevail. Everyone's going home today. Understood. Uh, let's put an end to the, let's put an end put an end to the end. All right, everybody's going home today. Understood. <laughs> Aye. We're part of the dead end, Alphano, Alize, and uh, Graha, or uh, uh, Thancred. Uh, I gotta watch over the twins. And I just prefer Thancred as the uh, tank. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's a personal preference. By the way, this dungeon is murder when you're doing this not in the trust. So it you is are murder. Finally here, in this place between death and rebirth, where life knows no dawn. Come then. Follow me down into the darkest depths of despair. This being, this is what happens if you pollute the world. Let's we'll say it that way. All right, it's ready for battle. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful blue star that fell to pestilence and rotted inside and out. The more its people clung to life, the more they suffered.
keep forgetting I have this one other ability. Until they curse not the illness, but their fellow corrupted. Forgotten seashell. This world is not the boundless paradise we were promised. A population quickly outstripped the habitable land while seas we thought would shine forever blue ran dry. Spoiled in forging the tools of conquest, cramped homes turned to squalor, and then came the sickness. Our undoing and the final blessing this saw has to offer 
We are no longer the fools we once were. Wheresoever life goes, death will follow. Indeed, existence is but the most painful path upon nothing, unto nothingness. And the life, the wise embrace their obliteration wholeheartedly. Those who lived and rest. Those who died. And the very last of them wished they had never been born at all. In a faraway place, a brilliant star eradicated disease. Before destroying the self-same lives it had saved.
Its people sought ever greater freedoms no matter the cost. That otherworldly beings for, should first grace us with their presence as a sign. Indeed, they understand that we, the global community, are possessed with the wisdom and compassion needed to guide this star back to the path of righteousness. Yet the freedom fires dare to undermine us, inviting chaos to disrupt the order we labored so hard to build. They have forgotten the history of this star and its once myriad nations. The wars raged, waged, the countless lives lost. They must be brought to heal. The world united under a single standard, no matter the cost. Isn't that what Garden Mom thought? Try to buy peace with fire and steel. upgrade we constructed the peacekeeper the pinnacle of engineering and technology this mighty war machine was designed to rid us of the freedom fighters as well as any other potential threats to the peace we have so long pined for its artificial intelligence ensures that singular function takes carried out with cold and calculating precision indeed the 10,000 peacekeeper units we created are now routing uh, have now routed every threat to peace including us all that remains is to stand and fight
Yeah, I need to focus more on staying alive than trying to get my positionals right. Don't stand with, with Alpha No and Alize. See, I tell you, I tell you, even with the trust, it's 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 crazy. Okay, I think I have an idea of what I need to do. Okay. So, Thankard will be in front on the other side. Alpha Noah will be in the center here. Alize will take the right. I'll take the left. Doing much better. Move. get into my combo and just kind of like miss mechanics. I was doing better at the beginning though. I, th I think my strategy of being on the left while well, I usually take the right. Maybe a little closer to Alpha now. I have an idea of the mechanics. I understand the mechanics. It's just not losing focus on it on 
doing mechanics. I, I do have to say, they made these the dungeons in Endwalker crazy. I mean, just in Tower of Zot, the last fight, it can be insane. It's like, where is the safe place? There we go. You focus more on the mechanics there. Moments reprieve. What the fire does? There we go. Uh, three types of charm. Bending. And when one asked, what is the point? There were none left to answer. <laughs> Father still Pretty. existed a star without strife. Where none remembered life's trials or its joys.
attack. Long forgotten essence. A curious travel visit our star, a bird that per offered these questions. What meaning does life hold? For what do you strive? I could find no satisfactory answers, only bittersweet memories of an age long past. There was a time when we were lesser, and in our nescience, the sought purpose, struggled to justify life's worth. That was, of course, before we achieved perfection. Now, condemned to our paradise, we understand the faulty, the futility of our existence. Like the fledglings we once were, the poor bird could not accept the truth. It asked us again and again, hoping perhaps our answer might change. Thing to read.
The Last Mercy. Rala. So they created the kindest, most gentle of beasts. as it was beautiful. Ah! Bathed in its golden glow, they all slept happy ever after. There we go.
After the battle, I pull down the pull down the mask, pull back the hat, which is on the cord that's on the head. That's my my thing as I take it off. For cutscenes. defies all reason. The souls within me writhe and recoil in your presence. What must I do? What pain must I visit upon you to make you surrender to despair? No one is unbreakable. What pains one may weather may bring another to tears. But therein lies our strength. For when we fall, our brothers and sisters are there to raise us up again and again without end. I see. But no matter how much hope you Ever will there be more to spare? Ever will the living pass the present and the past the future? So shall she sing into life ceaselessly! Stop! Please stop! 
We will not suffer alone. All will know our pain. No, you don't. Gifted them escape and rendered yourself powerless. Bereft of the synergy you claim is your strength, unless you mean to call upon the dead once more. to the last, but you will be one with us ere long. You will be battered and torn and made to crawl. You will weep and wail and curse your impotence, curse your life as it fades. As we did, as we died. Such pain and sorrow we felt, such anguish and rage. We tried, we tried, but it was no use. Only when we surrendered did we find release, only when we embraced death. So join us in despair and embrace yours. Shinryo? At the end of everything, I find you, my friend. I sought something in you once, as you did in me. When at last I understood what it was, I journeyed to Shalian to seek you out. Struck a bargain with the woman who shares your gift. In exchange for lending the Scions my aid, I was given the means to come hither. Gorging upon what remained of the Mother Crystal, I reclaimed the form of the Dragon. And, hungry still for our reunion, I rode the light of the stars to you. 
I take it this is your prey. But why does it still live? Surely it is no match for you. Look, I haven't gotten a chance, okay? I Jesus, you're interrupting me. Above something so banal as despair. Am I mistaken? If it comes to it, I won't save you. I like that. <sighs> I can not. What I desire of you isn't succor. It is satisfaction. So come! Let us dispense with this distraction, you and I! How am I supposed to <laughs> supposed to attack when I'm on your back? Oh, that's right. Aslan Skrissel can create a platform and summon in seven other people to help me out. Oh yeah. Uh, we're on a shooting reuse back, or at least hovering above it. Traveling through space and time. Uh, trials to final day. Sadly, unlike the Mother Crystal, this is not trustable. Mainly because we sent our trust away. <laughs> They're not here. We're alone. The Mother Crystal made sense because we were... They were there the whole time, all the way down through the Atilset scope. But when it comes to the to this, not the case. So all I have to do is something. That's six minutes. What do you want to do? I don't know. Let's see, let me take a look at my timers. Oh, my mission's complete. Go back to the barracks. It's only 1,514. Actually, hold on. Let's. I need to go to New, New Gridania. Oh, I was going to the Golden Saucer. I didn't even want to go to the Golden Saucer, anyways. But I do need to go here. May I purchase, make some purchases? I met. I, I'm. I'm. I'm the mayor of a free company, or at least that's what we're calling it. Our free company is mayor. Lock up on company actions. I can only put two up at once, so why they have 15 as the total that I can get, I don't know. But that's uh, actions.
Here we are. Boost rates. Here we go. Uh, Excellent. Hey, what do you know? I think I can do this quickly. No. We can't do it quickly. I don't just... This is a bit crazy. <laughs> I have to put my hat on. You will never reach it. Will never reach the deliverance you seek. There you go, a Hrothgar Paladin. Our hunt ends this day. There is nowhere you can flee that we cannot follow. Even stars must die. We have 
Come on. I'm getting a raise. If there was no happiness in life. I never say that I'm good at this. Oh! Intermission! There is only one place it may be found.
Mission two. Just wait for it, just wait for it.
Oh, I should have taken my hat off. Well, say it's like a heat of battle thing. I don't know. No matter where we flew, there was only darkness, and loneliness, and pain. We couldn't find the answers Hermes yearned for. The answers he deserved. Greetings, you who are my final encounter. I wish to hear your words, share your feelings, know your thoughts. May we please be friends? Those are big mitts. Can't see my face really at all. <laughs> This is why I think I should have taken off my helm. <laughs> yes, I can see them. The memories of a long, long journey. So many people. The thoughts of them overflowing in your heart. What they live for. What gives their lives meaning. There was never a single answer. You gather pieces of happiness, precious and fragile, only to lose them. Then start again. On and on it goes, until death takes you into its gentle embrace. That which Hermes sent us to find was there all this time on a Theris. It was always there. We created it together. Um, it was always there. Like a field of flowers, perhaps. At first a single blossom, it spreads and takes on more colors. Thank you for guiding me here. To find these words at journey's end fills me with joy. And so, before I fall forever silent, there is one thing I must do. No expression of regret will undo what my sisters and I have done, or restore what we have stolen. But if you would allow it, I would sing one last song. A song of the newfound joy that swells in my heart. Of the beauty of light when it shines across a dark and starless sea. Of a dream that from the soil of worlds now lost to sorrow, life will spring forth once more, nourished by gentle rains and caressed by uplifting winds, a song of hope.
one day, life will fill the universe again, and Hermes will see this and smile. How, I do not know. But I do know that, where there is a will, there is a way. After all, miracles happen every day, do they not? <laughs> I will create a path back to your ship, where your dear friends await. Hold in your heart your desire to return to them, then follow my lead and walk forth. That hope will surely guide you true. You mean to return to the world where you are hailed as a hero. Hear me then. Not as a hero, but as simply you. As I learned in Alamigo, you are a formidable foe. Stronger than any I have faced. Against you, I need bring my all to bear. I need burn through the candle of my life. This is the sole pleasure I know. And it is the sole pleasure I have to share. And so I come before you to issue challenge and offer singular bliss. If you wish to walk away, I will not stop you. You value life. You do not burn yours save for reasons you deem worthy. Reasons such as those which brought you here. The salvation of a world and its people. The motives of a hero true. But there is more to you than that. You know this to be true. As surely as you know the thrill of pushing your body and soul to their limits of confronting ever mightier foes, dancing ever closer to the precipice, wondering if this will be the one to finally, finally fill the void. Such pleasures you seek for their own sake, and no other reason. Is this not so, adventurer? So here's my thought, uh, and Amigos, maybe not so much with Eligos. Eligos, I think I, I did that, I can't deny. Because he, he has this thing where you know, pushing it to the limit. But uh, I, I think Amigos is in it for the good. Basically, he, he wants to get to the point where he can rest. But he wants to make sure everything is fine, everything's good. That nice calm, that peace. 
Um, so I think it's more of think what you will. I'm not letting you leave this place because all he brings is disaster. Especially if he keeps chasing me, trying to go for this fight. So you would still play the hero. No matter. In acceptance, you betray your deception. You know full well what we are and what we seek. To shine incandescent in death's shadow. What I really regret is this is not having recorded this on Elegos because it was fantastic. This is the best part of the expansion. I need to pee though. So I'm going to quickly run to the restroom. I'll be right back and we will finally have a duel with Xenos Vital Galvez. All right, here we are. Reaper and Reaper action. Hothgar Reaper versus Garling Reaper. Your souls blaze with passion. The space comes to life with dynamis as your spirit burns in kind. Your soul burns brighter. Your power swells. I have the spark of hope burning with dynamis shaped by the memory of your journey and exceeding your own limits. Hold nothing back. Push yourself to your limits and lead to mine. Can you, I see? Oh, 
know the full extent of my I think I did pretty good compared to when I did this on Monk. Fire is already spent. Yes, yes, rise once more. It mustn't end yet. Reflexes! 
Show me your vaunted fortitude. God. A test of your reflexes. I have you. Almost got it through that that second phase. Unfortunately, I've got plenty of lives left. I have you. No, I have you. No, not yet. Not until the last of me is spent. Scythe versus Scythe. You think your LB3 can do it? Now we're just punching each other. I love this cutscene. You can't watch it in the end. I hate it. This is a squee moment. Squee! I want that cutscene available in the interim. But no. those around me understood their obsessions 
Besieged by their banality, the world is a mire of tedium and trivialities. But in these fleeting moments, there is a spark, blinding, brilliant. Too soon. What of you, my mirror, born into this world, bestowed name, bid to seek out strife and adventure? Shroud, Ladosha, Fanolin. Was this life a gift or a burden? Ishgard, Ugani, Alamigo. Kristarian, Shalian, I Last words of Xenos Vitar Gallus. And our teleporter just happens to land right next to us. whose body remains at the end of the universe. Can you hear? Say. Must tend to. Open your, please. Someone, and please. <laughs> you can't leave us, not like this. If you do, I'll never forgive you. So come on. Open your eyes and get up! Are you... are you with us?
Oh, thank the heavens. For a moment, we thought... Did, did anybody think of taking off my hat and mask? Did anybody think of that? No. Apparently not. Anyways. Is everyone right? After what you've done, you're the last person to be asking that. You... How can you keep your promise if you're not here? Another fine show you've put on, my friend. A fine show indeed. What were you thinking, fighting alone? Never do that again. My poor heart couldn't bear it. Put yourself in our place. If you hadn't returned, how do you think we would feel? And if that sounds harsh, it's because we care. We tended to thy wounds as best we could. But how is the pain? <laughs> uh, tolerable. That is gladdening. Grievous as thine injuries were, however, I would counsel repose for a time. Gladdening! There's nothing gladdening about this! When Meteon appeared in here and told us that you were right behind her, we all got our hopes up. But you never came! And when you finally deign to appear, you're within an ilm of your life! Damn you! Damn you for making us worry! <laughs> Alright. Oh, those were cries of celebration! Anyway, well, the important thing is that you're all alive and in reasonably good health, and we mean to get you back that way. As for your earlier request, I'm quite certain we're in range to make contact now. Ah, excellent. Let us announce our return at once. <laughs> I hope you're ready. <laughs> While you were unconscious, we set out from Ultima Thule, you see. Can you stand? If so, you may wish to see what's outside. God, my hand is so big compared to his. How can he lift me? We're home, my friend. We're home. You know, there's many a cutscene where they remove your helm. I know because in one of my other characters, he has glasses for his helm. But there are scenes where they're just completely on, which annoys the hell out of me because he's, he's supposed to wear glasses. He can't really see very well without the glasses.
that? It is! It's the Ragnarok! They're back! Thank heavens. Truly. Welcome home. Ah! Yes. Ah. They two turn it into a race who can get the harbor first. The Warrior of Light, Emma Ghost Windrower. Concept art, where it uses, oh, they don't show the Warrior of Light in here. Dearest mother, dearest father, Hello, mother. this letter oh, father. will be the very last that I write to you from the Rising Stones. Mm -hmm. 
as I commit these words to parchment. I fondly recall my journey as a scion. From the time I first walked into the Order's former halls, to the time I set forth to forestall the final days. At the farthest reaches of the Sea of Stars, we fought the battle of our lives. Fought against despair itself, a veritable maelstrom of it, fed by the resignation that dwelled in the hearts of beings not so unlike ourselves. Full oft have I harboured the same malaise. Have I been brought to my knees, crushed by the weight of sorrow and defeat, convinced that I will never rise again. However, I have also known many moments of unbridled joy and happiness. By this truth do I find hope within, blooming resplendent like the Elpis flower. And thus do I endure. Do I look forward to creating more memories with my friends and loved ones? For from these fertile seeds, yet more hope shall spring forth. And they will grow to become shining lights that illuminate the dark. Thus believing, I leave the rising stones behind, as will my comrades. For, as we have decided, after careful deliberation, we are disbanding the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. There you are, Alphano. Everyone is already gathered in the foyer. My apologies. I'll be right there. At least, that is what the story will be. Sorry to keep you all waiting. What could you possibly have left to do now? Oh, just a letter. I imagine it will be a while before we can gather like this again. So it must be, if we're to keep up appearances. From now on, it falls to the Grand Company of Eorzea and its allies to deal with the realm's crises. Meanwhile, we shall return to our erstwhile ways. Retreating from plain sight to take our place in the shadows once more. Indeed. For the foreseeable future, I expect that we must work independently as we seek out problems that want for solving. 
But a day will come when we face another great challenge. And we will face it together, as we always have. As much as I look forward to that day, I do hope it doesn't come any time soon. Well, formal association or no, if any of you should require my services, you need but ask. I'll be glad to keep my lance arm honed. I'll hold you to that. So you had better keep your link pearl on hand. <laughs> so you really mean to stay, Tataru? Oh, someone has to keep the Rising Stones in proper order. And even a super-secret organization requires a super-secret base of operations. To the rest of the world, it will be naught more than a workshop for Eorzea's foremost up-and-coming artisan. If you thought our coffers were full to bursting before, just wait till I can devote myself wholly to the crafts. Plotting to build a mercantile empire to rival that of Lord Lodorito, are we? <laughs> I, for one, look forward to your future successes, Tataru. As do I our next meeting. And with that, I believe it is past time you all made ready to depart. Leave no preparations undone or words unsaid, all right? Now, off with you. Where to start? Let's go all the way out here. In words. <clears throat> Kaha. Oh, uh, amigos. Might you have a moment to talk? Mm hmm. The silence step away from the public eye and left to consider what new endeavors I might pursue. And after speaking with Coral, I decided I'll be assisting in rebuilding the students of Baldestian. Not only am I indebted to Master Goloff for giving me a new home, but had our order never existed, I would never have set foot in the Crystal Tower. How different my life might have been. I would have never met you, never became caretaker of the tower, never became a scion. Oh, I'm getting emotions again. You gave me the chance to do so much good, and I hope to continue so with the students. Uh, for an added benefit, new mysteries often find their way to our doorstep. Mysteries that could prove ideal for fulfilling our promise. We embark on a new adventure together. Unlike any we've experienced before. Yes. Whenever you have the time and inclination, my friend, I stand ready to accompany you into the unknown. Do you recall in the realm of the Omicrons, when I asked if you thought I may someday be mentioned in your epic? While it is true, that to earn a place at your side would be the stuff of dreams. In the end, nothing would give me greater joy than to stand with you in the here and now. It needn't be some grand endeavor. There needn't, there needn't be a promise. 
Whenever adventure calls, I won't hesitate to invite you. And I hope you will do the same for me. As long as you don't know, over your exert yourself. I promised that Glug that I'd make sure he didn't overexert himself. I know, I know. I can, <laughs> I can all but hear Lena and Becklug's voices each time you remind me. As much as I have, have already seen, there's still so much we haven't. Who knows, perhaps we'll even endeavor encounter survivors of the Omicrons somewhere out there. After all, given how they took to the stars, it's only... It isn't implausible that some found themselves far from home. And should we encounter a wayward traveler waiting commands that will never come? I would bid them seek adventure with someone, and with that partner find new purpose, a new dream. For if crystals can hold fast to dreams, why not Omicrons? Wherever your, your plans may lead, do not hesitate to send word. And should a commission of interest come my way, you'll be the first to know. Preview of patch con content. Yestola! Oh, are we saying our farewells too? I hadn't at present planned on a journey of any great length. Not that I am averse to a moment or two of quiet reminiscence. In fact, there is something I've been meaning to ask you. Something that had been in my thoughts since the last flames of the final days subsided. During our travels, we have witnessed more than a lifetime's worth of oddities and spectacles. More than can, e can be easily recalled or remembered. And nestled among these memories are certain essential facts. The history of, of Atheris and the ancients, glimpses of the Ea, of their culture and philosophy. I then simply hoard such treasures in my m mind. Wonder if I should not be disseminating them in formal records of wider for wider consumption. When needed, I have pe penned records and prepared briefings. But ever have I balked at the idea of binding the subject of my studies in a book or tablet. Truth is given shape and inter interpretation. When we seek to capture it with our words, it's invariable molded to fit a narrative, no matter how well intentioned the rendering. An event as described as sad is some Asian which fall fails to express the, the emotional complexity, yet the word on the page is what endures pale shadow of reality. Throughout history, some have deliberately embellished the truth, but I believe many, if not most, deviations are the result of similar linguistic shortcomings, piling one upon the other until the end result is unrecognizable form from unrecognizable from its origin. Which is why I fear that writing an account in my own words would be akin to diluting fine wine with water. Yet even with the potential of corrupted meaning, I do of course realize that the importance of keeping written records. Without them, my search for wisdom would be a pa painful affair indeed. But what say you on this matter? Should I take up the quill, reflect upon those experiences only we have shared, and seek to preserve them for posterity? Uh, let them be read, read and remembered. Very well then. I shall endeavor to pen what I can of the Ea and the Ancients, and of so many other wonders. But I am no scribe. I will be less a public, polished work than more of a reordering of scattered notes. In any case, I feel much better having sought your opinion. Left to my own devices, we tend to overthink such things. Our own devices. 
and uh, if it thinks such things. I will otherwise return to following where my curiosity leads. After all, a safe method of travel to the first yet eludes me. Now, our venture into the great expanse has prompted an entirely new set of questions. Should you stumble into the unknown or struggle with some impenetrable mystery, know that I am at your beck and call. It never hurts to see things from a different perspective, and mine is rather different than most. <laughs> I like the, the music tone change. <laughs> we just sat there <laughs> crossing our arms and staring at each other. If you have something to say, then out with it. Just worried how you'll learn your keep now. We talk as if the science... D <laughs> the solution is more than your pretense. There may have <laughs> your calls to action, but we should be compensated as before. <laughs> Why are you so concerned for me, anyway? In any case, I do not want for options, even if some are worse than others. No sooner did Emmer hear about our disbandment than he offered me a position as a guardsman in the Imperium District. As former Azure de Dragoon, I'm guaranteed to be popular, he said. <laughs> What does he take me for? Even without his medal, I am perfectly capable of finding employment and have. Some days ago, a Hainish envoy arrived with word from Vritra. The worm requests my presence as soon as things have settled down. I didn't deign to mention why I'm needed, but it it pertains to dragons, like his not. In Thavnir, like a Elsewhere, the phenomenon caused by the final days abated when they, we defeated Meteon. Though it was too late for those who had, had already transformed, life is beginning to return to normal for the survivors. Of those who sought refuge in Charlian, most have already returned home. But many do not have a home to return to, or, nor loved ones. By an arrangement between Vitra and the Forum, such souls may remain in Charlian if they wish to work and study. Petra is always the satrap in truth. Was always the satrap in truth. It's gratifying to see him become one in name as well, one who has the complete confidence of his people. If the envoy's tone was any indication, <laughs> I often find myself speaking favorably of dragons of late. Not so long ago, I would have assumed his benevolence hid ulterior motives, but it is clear he cares for his people, and they in turn revere him. To know such a nation may flourish if is comforting. Vitra's kin sought release from co conflict. So weary were they of the suffering it wrought, they surrendered to oblivion. But Midgard Sormer didn't give up, and ho hope he made the journey to distant Theris with his clutch of hags. And though his progeny went on to be, be embroiled in conflict with men, there were times that, when they transcended hatred to abide in harmony. That is their legacy and their triumph. In my lands, I feel the weight of their struggle and the strength of their resolve, and it lends me strength. These things I might never have learned had I not joined you. Should I ever have needed you have ever have needed me, I will come. At the very least, it might be an opportunity to earn coin. Also, possible preview of patch content. We need to go to Thavnir and help out Arstinian with something that Vitra needed help with. Ah, a champion and savior. I'm beginning to think my a chance for an audience would never come. <laughs> that sounded more amusing in my head. Speaking of heads, I was worried about yours and the rest of you, for that matter. On the mend, I trust. Yep, I'm good. Although I got a few eggs still. Glad to hear... <laughs> here. 
You were in a bad way, and healing magics are no. I'm impressed with how swiftly you've recovered. Then again, tis hardly the first time you've treated death. Your strength of will has never failed to astonish me. Look at what you've accomplished. Meteon defeated, your song, her song of oblivion cut short, the source and all of her reflections delivered from the final days. If you had faltered at the last, then all hope would have been lost, but you held fast. Now Reen has a tomorrow to look forward to, and I would ask for no greater gift than that. As for a lesser gift, however, the next time you, you see her, I would appreciate you not describing my travel plans with Oriange as endless wandering. We have a purpose in our roaming, after all, keeping an eye on things in the absence of the science on the world stage. There'll never be an end to the little problems that go unattended by nations. We will do our best to help out where and when we can. Which I suppose it'll approach not far far removed from endless wandering when you get down to it. Perhaps you could tell her I'm faring well and leave it at that. Hey? No need to mention this feeling of being uprooted. I've never been one to stand still for long, but when I think of home, tis the rising stones that comes to mind. How many times have we set out from this base, thence to return when our work was done? On the day the science came together, I only hoped for Mimphilia to find a place where she belonged, but never did I expect to find one here for myself. Indulge me, Amigos. I have a question for you, and imagine Mimphilia herself is asking. Are you glad you joined the science? Best decision I ever made. I don't know why I would say the other one. I, I can honestly say the same. But all good things must come to an end, at least for a time. Should you need a helping hand for infiltration or reconnaissance, you know who to ask. I'll come running. They'll likely get a certain funny-talking fortune teller into the bargain. Rianjia. Speaking of the uh, funny-talking uh, fortune teller. Emigos, thou hast spoken with our comrades. Though this part be no furthermore, tis nonetheless occasion for sorrow. Akin to a pixie's path, the navigation of such farewells is a perilous endeavor indeed. For their part, however, the Loprets embark upon a new beginning. Though bereft of its purpose as a vessel, the moon yet remaineth hospitable for the creatures of Etheris. Thus do our lunar visitors convene with the forum, intent on assigning some new beneficial role to their solitary, our solitary satellite. Yet ere that come, may come to pass, there is much and more each party must learn of the other, a process which doth promise to be eventful indeed. To that end, a cadre of Luprits hath, hath gleefully dis dispersed across our lands in the name of mutual understanding. Heidelin, tis said, did imbue them with the, her love for all things born of this star. And tis Vena's own nature, I believe, which doth manifest in its irrepressible, inexhaustible curiosity of theirs. Having witnessed that which they strove to achieve, I wish more most keenly for their long labors to be rewarded, that their abiding affection for man result in a boon for all. Moreover, I hope to continue our acquaintance and share in such knowledge as they sh see fit to impart. Acquaintance, I call it friendship. I did not wish to presume. I, I'd be honored should they consider me a friend. For it is certainly true that I have grown fond of their company. Uh, but I shall digress no further. This day should belong to the science of the Seventh On, to mine inc 
comparable companions. Since oft times hath mine reticence caused thee grief, and mine actions spread allies to suspect betrayal. And yet here amongst you I still stand. No amount of words could express my gratitude for thine acceptance and forgiveness. Thus instead I do proffer my humble support. Be it into the deepest abyss or the highest heavens, even if I must needs founder across stormy seas, ever shall I answer thy summons. Emigos, seen to your preparations, have you? I'm just making another sweep of my belongings. Wouldn't do to find to find I've forgotten something halfway to my destination. Oh, in case you haven't heard, we've received new reports detailing the devastation caused by the final days. It appears the situation is gravest in the lands surrounding the bounty, where the sky first began to burn. After that, the calamity was observed in the far north, in Garlemald, and the frozen lands beyond. We had also... We also had reports of the heavens catching fire in isolated locations, one which was an area in the northern empty. Had our quest taken any longer, Charlene too may have come under threat. I thank goodness it's over now. To be sure, blasphemies and lesser beasts may still be roaming about, but these, these localized crises, crises they should be well within the capabilities of each nation to handle on their own. The science are no longer needed. Which isn't to say that we won't help out where we can, of course, as individuals. No more of this order business. For my part, I'm headed to Garlemald with Alphanel. They were among the worst afflicted and still need all the help they can get. It won't be easy. An inevitable part of aiding those in need is coming face to face with tragedy. Knowing it doesn't, doesn't make it any easier though, that I'll curse my that I'll curse my weakness, my inability to fix every problem and save every lost soul. But no matter how much it hurts, I won't give up. I'll do what I can for as many people as I can, begrudgingly no begrudging no effort. And should I find myself discouraged, I'll remember you. Think back fondly to one of our, your many moments of triumph and an accompanied determination, determined expression. Even those that still annoy me in retrospect, like when you activate the teleporter without warning. Yeah. Uh, and should you hear from me, I want you to remember too. Remember that I'm out there somewhere, trying my very best. We can hear hearing all about the legendary Alize Levieux. Not that I'm trying to become famous or anything. That being said. The next time we meet, I'll be vastly approved. So don't be surprised when you find yourself marveling at me. Talk to Crow before we go with Alpha now. Oh, Emigos, how are you feeling? Any lingering aches or pains? Uh, a few pains, but it's fine. Can't apologize enough for sending Xenos to find you in Ultima Thule. When he came to me in Charlene, I was uh, truly torn, as ever there was only one thing on my mind his mind. Forced to make a decision, I reasoned that if he could not be deterred from seeking you out, he might at least aid us in our cause, and so I struck a bargain. In the end, he was true to his word, and you defeated him despite your earlier exertions. But knowing the state you were found in, I could have ended very differently. My decision almost cost you your life, and no words could express the remorse I feel. I won't lie to you, I thought that <laughs> oh, let's see. It worked out. You did the right thing. Um, I. Okay, I'm gonna. 
Okay, so I think with Alagos, I did, it worked out, you did the right thing. Still kind of like that. I don't want to see it one way. I thought it was dated. Thought that that was it for me. Yeah, so did everyone. I'm so sorry, Emigos. Time and time again, it's been made to feel woefully inadequate. It wasn't much use in battle, uh, nor could I face the form without my nerves getting the better of me. I always felt to you and the others. I must and will do better. I shall begin with the restoration of the students of Balthusian. Through our work, Charlien will strengthen its ties with other nations, and we will be better prepared to face whatever threats arise in the future. Of course, this isn't something I can accomplish alone, but thankfully I have the staunchest of help in Raha and Ojika, and our other remaining members. Together, we'll continue Grandfather's work. As before, certain commissions will take us to dangerous locales, and we will need to call upon seasoned adventurers. In such times, might you be willing to assist us? Not because you feel obliged by me, but because you feel, feel the lure for the task itself? Yeah, you can count on me. Marvelous. Should something of, the inter of interest arise, I shan't hesitate to reach out to you. Until that day, I shall endeavor to become a more dependable comrade. Last but not least, Alphano. Oh, Emigos, pray forgive me for delaying the gathering. I was writing a letter, you see, to my parents. As busy as father has been tending the aftermath of the exodus, he has been good enough to show concern for the scions. And besides, I've made them worry enough for a lifetime. Henceforth, I will endeavor to write as often as I am able. A little effort to set their minds at ease while we continue to be away from Charlien. Both Alize and I are off to assist with Garlemald's recovery, you see. Though uncertainty remains over what will become of the nation, we cannot well leave the capital in its present state. We will rejoin those members of the Ildzabod contingent, still stationed there. Lucia and Maxima helmed the re relief effort with support from our allies, the people of Garlemald among them. They will, they will gradually be joined by those who have finished treating the tempered across the lands. Lest you misunderstand, we do not seek redemption for failing Lysinia and her sister. That is a burden we must always bear. Nay, we go because the truth of, of Lord Aquintus' words. The truth that whatever ideals individuals may expose, nations are not moved to action unless they stand to benefit. For the foreseeable future, the fallen empire will be at the mercy of both internal and external forces. And though I do not doubt the intentions of the contingent, with greater powers involved in the relief effort, our allies may well find themselves drawn to a political agenda. In going, we seek to ensure that the needs of the people come first, to understand their hearts, that we might better help them to begin anew. I'll visit when I can. I'm not much for letters. I don't want a post Moogle trying to track me down. <laughs> By all means. Full glad that I'd be here for your visit. I believe I speak for Alize as well. For fairly as long as I've been in Neosia, you've been at my side, watching over me, in good times and in bad. How many times have we gathered to share tidings? None could possibly keep count. The world is changing and will continue to do so. And no matter what the future brings, I hope that I can ever, can ever look to you. Good times and in bad as a dependable comrade and dear friend both. Thank you, Amigos, from the bottom of my heart. And to Tataru. What can you fill, have you? If so, I'm thinking to send send everyone off. Leave the rising stones. With your permission, then. 
Your attention, please. At risk of spoiling the mood, the time for departure is upon us. Get out! <laughs> My capacity as a receptionist. I bid you all safe journeys till next next we meet. Be well. So we get the Argos horn. You wind up Perios. Uh, footfalls, orchestrian roll, and flow, orchestrian roll. And one last cutscene. I suppose we're off to Garlemald then. Though we ought to speak with Lord Emmerich first. If he's received word of any recent developments, we need to know. It would be prudent to purchase some warmer clothes at least. Mayhap we can pick up a few souvenirs for Euless and the others while we're at it. Where will you all be heading next? Dravania, there is a book I've been meaning to borrow from the great Gubal Library. And I can think of at least one person who will be most displeased should I fail to visit before leaving. We've no particular destination in mind, but we do intend to stop in Charlian before we set off. We had thought to ask after the Loperitz. I am curious as to how well those who chose to remain are adapting to their changed circumstances. Might we accompany you then? Rahar and I were planning to return to the Baldessian Annex. Commissions have been piling up in our absence, and they must be dealt with ere we begin our work in earnest. Estinian, you will return to Rads at Harn, will you not? Aye. For Vritra's benefit, though I've yet to hear the details, I may not stay long. I see. Then it is here the Scions at last part ways, each to some far-flung corner of the realm. Perhaps. But I believe one of our number, a rather important one at that, has yet to divulge his plans. <laughs> Quite right. Indeed. Fair point. So, what's next for our humble adventurer? So the the main the main headcanon for yet stand tall, my friend, our journey will never end. So. Um, oh. The constancy of this place never ceases to amaze me. An ocean of souls, shimmering and eternal. And yet, 
something stirs. Yes. Steeped in darkness, deep as starless night, the beast hungers. Alas, I dare not investigate in earnest before the coming of my guiding star, as he foretold. We shall descend to the depths, you and I, to confront the dread beast pandemonium. Oh, the sights we shall see. The sights we shall see. So here we are, Elpis. We just heard a voice, which was Elidibus's voice. From my man in a white robe. I mean, this is Libus. Talks about Pandemonium, which is the first, which is the raid series. This expansion. Uh, Aphidelis, Asphodelis, the first one. Um, maybe that's what I'll do. That's what I'll do next. Um, show the story to the um, Pandemonium raid series. We saw Crystal Tower part of this because the, that was required. Uh, a required thing that part of the uh, AR MSQ, which was required because of Shadowbringers. I think it's because there's a cutscene. I think one of the reasons is because there's a cutscene where you call out Graha's name, but if you've never met Graha because you never did the Crystal Tower, it's kind of awkward or kind of weird. And you don't get that connection with Graha, so you kind of needed it. We get Argos. Where is he? There he is. Got our Argos mount. All right, so new quests are available. Hey, we're well over, we're over time of two and a half hours. I like to go to, and we're just on time by thing because I decided to do a shorter one the first time. Hey, we did one quest this video, one quest. I told you it was a doozy. Uh, it was nice that the we actually got a relatively uh, quick uh, cue for uh, the final days, so that's good. All right. We will see you next time. And yeah, we'll do the Red series. Might try the ra the previous Red series storylines as well in the future, but at least for uh, Asphodelus, since we got a connection and everything. That'd be good content, right? 14 parts! And Walker is done! Bean!